Hey everyone, uh, I'm Sid. I'm a third year medical student and a neuroscience graduate. So in this video, I'm just going to show you how I use ChatGPT and Anki uh, to help myself study, um, how to stay on top of my work in terms of all my modules and classes and all the exact prompts that I use. So I've been using ChatGPT since, you know, pretty much it came out. So that was first year of medicine for me. Um, and it's been really, really helpful. I don't really use YouTube videos anymore, or I, I mean, I don't even go to lectures or read textbooks. And I'll be honest, a lot of people do say that the chat GPT notes or what it does produce is incorrect. But so far from like what I found out, it's, it's not incorrect. You know, I go to my classes and um, I've sat all my exams and I've passed them using chat GPT. Now, I should like kind of tell you that I don't use the free version. I do pay for ChatGPT um, and I do think it is worth it. So um, yeah, but anyway, I'm just going to go into this video. I'm going to show you my entire system from like start to finish, um, how I approach studying, how I approach revision. So let's get into the video. I'm just going to share my screen and uh, you're going to see exactly my whole system and I'll walk you through it as well. Okay, so the first thing uh, what you want to do is actually figure out what you're going to study. Now over here you can see this is my uh, theory syllabus for internal medicine. So these are a bunch of different syllabus points and so let's say I want to study um, arterial hypertension, okay? So that's, that's the point we're going to be focusing on today. So what I do is I create a new note and I've got all my notes in the Apple Notes app. So uh, what are we doing? I forgot, okay, arterial hypertension. So then what I do from here is I open up my prompts and these are just the prompts that I use. So first I wanna break down the topic. Now, before you start asking ChatGPT to teach you everything about arterial hypertension. ChatGPT creates information in chunks. So if you if you like overwhelm it too much, it's not going to produce a lot of detail. So this, so let me show you what I do. So uh, let me open this on the side. Okay. So then I go to my prompts. I take this prompt, copy it, and then I paste it here. Now, so you can see from this prompt, right, this is going to break down the syllabus point into sections for me, subtopics. It's not going to explain it just yet. And it's going to do it as if, you know, like what I would find in a textbook. So this the class is internal medicine. Okay, just going to write that up. And the syllabus point is arterial hypertension. So now, as you can see, it just breaks it down into the different sections. Um, so we'll just wait for this to be finished. And what I normally do is I'll just copy this. And once I finish copying it, I paste it into this notes section over here. Now, so what I do is I just quickly go through it. So, okay, we've got a section on definition and classification epidemiology, etiology, pathophysiology, risk factors. Okay, so I just trying to, I just, in this, in this part of the video or in this um, phase, I just look at what sections don't I need. Um, I mean, I think they're all pretty important. Um, so I'll go ahead and keep that. And then I go to my prompts and I go to teach and explain. Now, this is how you should be doing it. If you want ChatGPT to properly teach you something and explain it to you, you can't just go ahead and copy all of this and paste it in because it's gonna, at some point, because it's got a finite amount of text to produce, it's gonna start lacking the detail and the like clarifications and things like that. So I do like one, two, two sections at a time. So I'll just do the first two. So you just copy that and you just keep doing them in sets of twos as you go along. So paste that, enter. And then once that finishes up, I go over here and copy this prompt here. So what this prompt does is it creates all that information that it's going to explain now 
So as you can see, it, it's explaining all of this right now, and it's going it's going to put it into a flashcard form, which is super useful. So as you can see, it's just finished that, paste that in, and now you've got flashcards. Okay. So what is the definition of arterial hypertension? Blah blah blah. Systolic is more than one forty, etc. So as you can see, this so this is what I study from. So I'll read this, and I'll and I'll go through. I'll be like, okay, this makes sense. What are the proper conditions for measuring blood pressure accurately? Okay, all right, makes sense. Until I get to something that doesn't make sense, I'll show you what I do as well. So for example, it says, what are the two major etiological classifications of hypertension? So there's primary and secondary. Now let's say you don't know what secondary hypertension is. So I'll open up a new temporary chart, go to my prompts, and I'll just copy this. Now this is, this, this prompt is for like a separate tab. This is where I have like certain questions that don't make sense. Um, why is my mom calling me? But anyway, these, this is for certain questions that, you know, that don't really make sense to me. So again, I'm studying internal medicine and it's arterial hypertension. So then I'll be like, I don't get what, um, or you know what, what's even easier is, we can do is just copy this flashcard, uh, paste it in here and be like, I don't get this. And then it just tells you, okay, so primary essential hypertension is 90, 95% of the cases, right? There's no identifiable cause, whereas secondary hypertension, it's caused by a condition. So if you have chronic kidney disease, you'll get arterial hypertension. So you, then you're like, okay, cool, I understand that. Now you can create a flashcard on secondary hypertension in itself as well. Uh, so something like, what is secondary hypertension? And then I just go into Anki, um, and let's say, okay, internal medicine, I create a new deck. So for me, this syllabus point, let's say it was like 48, then I put arterial hypertension, blah, blah, blah. It's over there. I'll drag it into the like correct folders and then I'll click add and then I'll move this tab right over and then I'll be like, okay, then this is where I start making the flashcards. So this is this is just the system right and it it does work it's so much easier to do it like this because in med school like you're expected to just read textbooks and whatnot but this is accurate it works it breaks down everything and it even makes flashcards for you like honestly like it, it doesn't get better than this um but that's pretty much my system in like a quick summary um if you will now if you want my exact prompts written out, I have made a free guide and I'll put that into the description somewhere so you can go ahead and download that. And if you are struggling with creating your own um, prompts tailored to your needs, uh, because again, like this is just for me uh, because I study medicine. So these are very tailored to, to my kind of niche. But if you're like studying A-level biology and you want prompts for that, or if you just don't really understand how the system works and you want more guidance in terms of how to set up your Anki, because <clears throat> if I show you my Anki, I've got a few um, like add-ons as well. So I've got this thing, it tracks your streaks. Um, I've got like uh, this thingy as well. So let, let's go through like a typical um, disease. So sleep apnea, okay, study now. If, so what's the defi definition of sleep apnea? Uh, episodes of complete or partial cessation um, of uh, airflow, right? And then you've got these buttons here, again, hard, um, good, easy, etc. But anyway, what I was saying is if you need more guidance, I do offer coaching sessions, um, and those are one-on-one -on -one sessions um, via like a Microsoft Teams call. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll add all of that into the description below if you guys are interested in that I do hope like some of this was of some use or help to you guys because it, I'm telling you it works So if you are like doing a levels or if you are in uni studying med or dentistry, whatever Do give this a shot and honestly it is worth paying for chat GPT um, just because the free version It's so limited, right? in terms of like the detail and the capabilities of um, the free version of ChatGPT anyway. 
Um, but yeah, anyways, I hope you found some use from this video. Um, if you did, uh, do subscribe, like, etc. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.